Messi finally gets that elusive World Cup. The Oilers are slipping down the standings as the Bills are looking like Super Bowl contenders. Hey, everyone, Rob Wong with you. Joined alongside by Toronto Sun Sports columnist Steve Simmons and national NHL writer Michael Trakos. Welcome into the Sun Sports Roundtable, a new weekly discussion about the hottest topics in sports. And, guys, how can we not start with the World Cup final? That's Argentina outlast France on penalties. Lionel Messi finally getting that World Cup title. He's so desperate. Desperately wanted. It is easy to be a prisoner of the moment, but that was for me one of the best winner take all games we've ever witnessed, Steve. But was it the best winner take game uh, we've ever seen? Well, the problem is in sports, we don't have enough winner take all games. We're used to best of sevens, we're used to playoff series. So we get winner take all in the Super Bowl, we get winner take all in the Grey Cup. And we get winner take all in the World Cup of Soccer. Now, if you want to include Wimbledon or finals of the U.S. Open or things like that, that's winner take all. But for the most part, we're used to playoffs. And so, yeah, this one game, one day, these two teams, these two amazing players. The way, I mean, at 2 nothing, didn't we all think it was over? Like at 2 nothing in soccer, it's like it's over. And then it's 2-2. Then it's 3-2. Then it's 3-3. Then it's 4. Like soccer doesn't end 4-3. And it, and it did. And so for that point of view, it was it it was phenomenal, whether it was yesterday or a year ago or 10 years ago. Yeah, I'm not the big, biggest soccer fan, Steve. Uh, you probably know that. And my family, my wife is even, a, you know, even uh, least interested or less interested in soccer as I am. And she was glued to the TV. So, you know, after that first half, I wanted to turn it off. Glad I didn't. Uh, what a spectacular back and forth game. And that's what the greats do. Like that, that was Crosby Ovechkin um, all over again, where one guy was saying, look what I can do. And then Mbappe was saying, you know what? Uh, I see what you're doing, Messi, and I'm going to one up you. And then it was back again with Messi. And th that's what you want. You want your superstars to take over. And that's what we saw. Um, it doesn't matter if you're a soccer fan or not. When the superstars are taking over the game, you can't help but be glued to the TV. And it's funny, the top, the top of my Sunday notes column was Gretzky, uh, sorry, was Crosby and Ovechkin and, and what LeBron's doing in the NBA. And I'm kicking myself Sunday afternoon thinking, why didn't I put Messi in there? Like, how did, how did, how did I miss that part? Um, because I don't think, I'm not a soccer thinker per se. It's, it's not a sport I grew up with. It's not a sport I know particularly well. Uh, but, but what I do love, I love the best at anything. I don't care what it is. Um, at any sport, at any time, to see the best and to see the best against each other on the, on the largest stage. And I, and I was trying to think yesterday of a Super Bowl that could compare. And I couldn't come up with one because there's never been one of these, you know, greatest quarterback of the era versus greatest quarterback of the era and, and what it, what's going to happen then. And, and, and if it did happen, it was never a great game. And so you almost have to go back to a Dallas-Pittsburgh Super Bowl. We're talking Terry Bradshaw and Roger Staubach to have a game, in my mind, that was sort of comparable to what we saw yesterday. And even that, I'm not sure, matches up. All right, moving from the uh, pitch to the ice, guys, where the Edmonton Oilers have lost two in a row, their latest defeat to the lowly Anaheim Ducks on home ice. The Oilers still hanging on to a wild card spot, Michael, but true or false, the Oilers will continue to slip and slide and will actually miss the playoffs this year. You know, watching Edmonton right now, Rob, I'm, I'm sort of reminded of Toronto's little slide at the beginning of the season. Um, this team is too good to be losing games the way they're losing. That being said, they have to make some changes on the back end. Uh, I don't think the Edmonton Oilers are going to be considered a Stanley Cup contender with that defense, especially with the way that Jack Campbell is playing as well. So uh, they have some issues to clean up. But you know, when you've got Connor McDavid and you've got Leon Dreisaitl and you've got a secondary scoring that includes Zach Hyman, uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Evander Kane, whenever he gets back, you're going to be in the mix. And I don't think Edmonton's going to fall out of a playoff spot but they definitely need to shore things up defensively, or you're just wasting another year of McDavid and Dreisaitl. We're wasting another year of McDavid and Dreisaitl, unfortunately, and especially because the West isn't very good. If you, look, if you look at the West right now, there's not a team in the West that you look at, unless Colorado is completely healthy, that you say, there's a team that can win the Stanley Cup. Nobody else in the West has that, in my, in my view. Everybody else has flaws. And so here's a conference that's, flawed by itself and here are the Oilers top heavy 
with, with the, really the two greatest forwards in the NHL right now, the two most productive forwards in the NHL. How is it that they're struggling to be a playoff team? Yeah, they're back in. They have to clean up what they have, whether it's with the players they have or whether it's out going out and finding some. We've been looking at this team now for about five years, uh, maybe even longer than that, but five years with those two guys being as great as they've been. And only for about a five-minute period did they ever look like they could contend for anything. And so there are deep flaws there. Uh, that that It's strange because if you have the two best players in the game, you should be a top or very close to a top, a really weak Western Conference. And they're not. And, and it must be driving Ken Hollins, the general manager, nuts. Lastly, the Buffalo Bills came into the season as odds-on favorites to win the Super Bowl. They've now won five in a row and remain the betting favorites. Steve, is this finally the year the Bills get it done? Um, what is that old expression that defense wins championships? Um, Buffalo Bills are a powerful offensive team. And boy, are they difficult to play against because Josh Allen plays at a, you know, basically he's a different human being than anyone else playing the position of quarterback in the NFL. And he's impossible to contain and impossible to stop, as is their offense. But if you look recently, the Miami Dolphins scored all kinds of points against them, and the Minnesota Vikings scored all kinds of points against them. Teams are running the ball on them. Teams are moving the ball. Yeah, they've had some injuries. But their defense has to be better, I think, come playoff time. Yeah, they're going to go in. They might even be the home you know, favorite um, all the way through. I'm not sure they can beat Kansas City. You know, the AFC is 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 very top heavy. And then you got across and you cross to you're gonna run into a San Francisco or a Philadelphia in, in in a Super Bowl, and that's gonna be a challenge because those teams are more complete than the Bills are. Bills are a great offensive team. I don't know if they're a great defensive team. Yeah, I'm going to echo what Steve said. Like, this, this is Buffalo, guys. This is the same team that just makes a habit of blowing big games, whether it's in hockey, whether it's in football. We all saw what happened last year big, where big games in, well, they had big <laughs> games in hockey. What, the puck in, or what, foot in the crease? Are we forgetting about how, that? How, how old are you? I'm like, old enough to remember years? foot in the crease. But let's yeah, go back 20 to 20 some years ago. <laughs> let's go back to Josh Allen. You know, this Bills team was every bit as good. How are you going to tell last me wide right? Yeah, come on. No, but they they had a game sealed up against the Kansas City Chiefs, and then Mahomes did it to them last year. So there's no reason. That no, they, they did it. No, no, no. They, they did, did it to it themselves. To themselves. Say. They couldn't figure out what to do with 13 seconds. Well, that was just bad coaching. It, go, and bad it goes back to defense. Play. It goes back to being a cursed Buffalo uh, Bills fan. It goes back to whatever you want to say. But uh, that team last year was every bit as good. Um, this year, they have every bit of chance uh, to win a Super Bowl, but. No, this is Charlie Brown. Um, until Lucy except, stops pulling away the football, I'm not believing except this. They might, except they might win a Super Bowl 50-48, which might, which might you know, go back to yesterday's soccer game and become one of those classic all-time great games because they can score that many points and they can allow that many points. And we don't see that very often. You know, usually when the, the game's that high scoring in the Super Bowl like that, like that Brady Atlanta game a number of years back, but that was more bad football than it was great football. And I think now, you know, this is a great Buffalo Bills team offensively and can really score and can really present challenges. But can they stop people when it matters? Yeah, that will be the biggest question mark come playoff time with regards to the Buffalo Bills. Let us know your thoughts about all of these topics in the comments section. For Steve Simmons and Michael Trakos, I'm Rob Wong. Thanks for tuning in to the Sun Sports Roundtable.